Welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show. My name is Cami Baker. I am your guest host, and I am interviewing today a friend of mine that I met at a um, at a speaking engagement. Gosh, about two years ago, I think we both were at Habitude Warriors with Eric Swanson, and this is Ryan Lowe. Ryan, say hello to everybody. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? <laughs> Ryan is a speaker and an author, and his saying is, get off your attitude. So, Ryan, how did you come up with that, uh, with that tagline and, and the name of your book, and how did all of this start for you? Uh, almost 10 years ago, I was running a life insurance business uh, with a friend of mine. We started it from ground floor. Uh, we had it. Uh, we were in 48 states. We had about 500 employees, and life was going great. And uh, the, we had that little bit of a market crash with the mortgage industry. And uh, what we did, we sold mortgage protection insurance. And most of our clients were all mortgage uh, companies, mortgage uh, offices, things of that nature. And what happened was I just had moved back from Dallas, Texas to Louisiana. And I was going to think I was going to you know, buy a house, live here, the whole nine yards. And like, just like that, within three to six months, we had to close shop close our business and uh, pay our debts off. And to make a long story short, I had to kind of re uh, find myself. I had to live in here in Louisiana. I didn't know anybody. Um, this is where I grew up. Didn't live here for 12, 15 years and needed to find a job. So I found a job not too far from where I lived. And really, to be honest with you, it was probably one of the most negative times of my life. I uh, had to go take a job that I didn't like. I had to go live on a buddy of mine's couch because I had no place to stay. Um, I had to borrow $100 from my brother-in-law. And I never forget sleeping on that couch about 2 in the morning. I never forget waking up about, you know, waking up with full of sweat, full of anxiety, full of stress. And these four words, I'm not kidding you, get off your attitude, just came out of nowhere. And so I had thought I heard it before. Uh, you know, I've listened to Zig Ziglar and been to a lot of his things and Brian Tracy and Les Brown and you name it. I've read all the books and listened to all the videos and, and all the audio sets. So the next day I go to that job that I couldn't stand and I Google get off your attitude. Could not find it. Was nowhere to be found. Um, I called friends of mine that were speakers. I emailed them. Hey, have you ever heard of this message before? And they all of them came back with no. So the, the final test was is to go see if there was a website. So I went on GoDaddy.com and Get Off Your Attitude was available. And so I bought .com, .net, .tv, all of them. And that was my new slogan because I said before I was so negative and in my pity party and I was just aggravated that I had lost my business and I'm working at a job that I couldn't stand. I knew at that point that that was my message to tell myself, hey, stop thinking, talking and acting negative. And just by those three habits alone um, really ch helped me change my life. And it was my self-talk, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, making sure that, I, like I said, I didn't think negative or talk negative or even got around negative people. And I made sure that my goal every day was to be positive. So that's where Get Off Your Attitude uh, was born. I didn't know that history about you. It sounds like you were in that business about the time that I was in real estate. And I, I had gotten into real estate probably 2005, 2006 when the market was really hot. And I remember people saying, well, it's not going to be hot forever. It's cyclical. It goes up and down. And you may be rolling in the yeah. dough now, but you won't forever. And I thought, nah. And I bought a house yeah. at the height of the market, and um, and I got hit pretty hard too. So so I didn't, you know, I wouldn't even think of. All, I mean, all those little ancillary businesses that when 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 the first domino falls, bam, they all go yeah. down. So that's yeah. that's amazing. So you know, I have the same thing happen. I I have um, uh, my new book that will be coming out is Lead or Be Led, and I listen to a lot of Grant Cardone, and one of his is Sell or Be Sold, and he has a lot of stuff yeah. like that. So I thought, well, Lead or Be Led, surely that. That's taken, but I did the same thing. I looked online, and nope, nowhere to be found was leader be led. So that's that's wow. how that's how the universe gives us what we need. So so tell yeah. me what you do with with your message. Like, who are your perfect clients, and how do you how do you share your message? Well, the cool thing is, is that my before I got into the insurance business, and I was actually in the mortgage industry right before I was a VP of sales 
for a large uh, national mortgage company. And that's how I got into the mortgage industry or the insurance industry. Before that, I traveled with Brian Tracy. And um, for eight years, that's how I met Eric. For eight years, I traveled the country teaching sales. And that's how I cut my teeth on becoming a speaker, not even knowing that. Just going out and doing keynotes and doing trainings and speaking in front of organizations. So when I decided to write the book, Get Off Your Attitude, my the only thing I really knew what to do was to go out and teach sales and talk to companies about sales. And uh, then I, uh, it kind of opened up the attitude lane for me. And then what happened was I started going out, as I do now, I go to associations, organizations, uh, different groups around the country and speak about attitude. But then I can kind of tailor it to if someone wants, wants me to talk to you know, leaders about attitude or salespeople about attitude or and here's my newest one um, or my two new things is I've had I've done such a great job with companies and organizations, leaders and salespeople. They always ask me to come back and talk to their either their customer service department or their operations team, all these different teams within the group or within the company. And the other thing is that it kind of spun off to now is positive culture. So my big thing is I go into organizations and not, like I said, I either teach leadership, uh, sales, customer service, and now culture. And how do we, uh, you know, keep that positive attitude as a leader, as a salesperson, as someone that, you know, deals with people on a day-to-day basis. So uh, most of the time I'm doing a lot of trainings with organizations. I do keynotes for all these big associations in these big organizations that had these annual conferences. So that's where I've been staying busy for the past several years. Well, welcome to the happiness jungle. When you are talking about positivity, our chief happiness officer, Lindy Eldridge, who created this, uh, this entity and, and logo and brand talks about that all the time that, you know, happiness is a choice and no matter what's going on, her thing is about uh, when your cookies crumble, you know, even like for her, uh, uh, breast cancer, divorce, and a mother going into a nursing home all in the same year. And with all that going on, you know, she was able to keep a, you know, keep face about it. And it, she's, you know, happiness is a choice. So talking to people about their attitude, you know, it's it's a really big business. There's pe- people really need to hear what your message is. So, so when you go in and share, tell me a little bit about what does a what does a talk look like with Ryan Lowe? What what is a typical like um, uh, your itinerary, if you will? Well, one of the things I, I really talk about, depending, all of my my talks are tailored. So it really depends on you know what organization I'm going in. But it, on a on a whole level, I go in and I really talk about kind of what you just said. We're in control of our attitude. We're in control on um, how we respond. I talk about in my book and in my talks about how children react, adults respond, Mm. and how do we respond as adults and and as professionals when we're in a role, and even at home. How do we respond? I have a five-year-old, beautiful little girl. How do we respond with that positive attitude? So I tell stories of uh, experiences that I've had. Um, When I was in high school, I got shot with a 12-gauge shotgun, Besides losing a multi-million dollar business, uh, getting sick several years ago, all these types of different things, um, we all battle, everyone that's watching this and everyone that's ever been on this earth, doesn't matter how much success we've ever achieved, we all battle with uh, uh, challenges, setbacks, negative people, negative events, whatever we want to call them. I call them growing opportunities. Um, how do we you know, move forward? So I talk about how to keep that positive attitude. What is a positive attitude? First, I have to explain it because most of us, uh, kind of some of what you just said, it's something that people need to hear. And growing up, no one really talks about attitude. And a lot of speakers don't even talk about attitude. We want to talk about leadership. We want to talk about sales. We want to talk about, you know, how to become the next best, greatest thing. Well, where does it stem from? It stems from the number one habit linked to our success, our own attitude. So I, I kind of share that with them. I share stories. I share principles. Um, I share a lot of things on um, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with negativity, how to deal with negative people, and how do we stay positive. And then I also, my biggest thing is how do we self-improve? How do we keep that positive attitude and have that discipline on um, you know, listening to podcasts, watching videos, reading books, whatever we can do to better ourselves on a daily basis? Because I find a lot of times that we fall short short on that. Now, what do you think is uh, the difference between attitude and mindset? 
Mindset is, that's a great question. Mindset is what we have set in our mind on what we're going to achieve, no matter what. Um, I tell the story about how, you know, I never wrote a book before, had no, no way, no, no training, nothing on how to write a book. If you would have met me 10 years ago when I was writing my book, come hell or high water, I was going to write that book. So I had that mindset that doesn't matter what's going on around me, how much money I had, whatever it was, I had that mindset that it was going to get done. Now, attitude, I find, is being more of who we are. How do we respond to that negativity? How, do we, um, how are we disciplined? How are we dedicated? How are we inspirational to others? How are we, um, you know, it's kind of like a personality type thing. How do we keep that positive personality? How do we keep a smile on our face even when everything around us is falling apart? Mm. Well, I love the way that you made the differentiator there with uh, with those two different ways of, of thinking with the mindset and the attitude. Now, to take a big step back, you mentioned uh, working with Brian Tracy and, and other bigs. Were you were you always an entrepreneur growing up? Did your family teach you about having a good attitude and, and setting goals and personal development? How did that all come about for you? Well, it's funny you say that. So if you ask my parents these days or my brothers and sisters, they'll tell you that I had the worst attitude ever growing up. And um, I don't buy, buy that. But I did uh, have a little bit of that negativity. We're all born. We're not born with it. Unfortunately, we get trained with it. And I did a lot of times I found, found myself hanging around with the wrong people or being at the wrong place at the wrong time. But one thing that my parents always had, uh, I, you know, always great family, great brothers and sisters, all that good stuff. The one thing I learned, though, that uh, two things, my mother, my father worked for a company for 40 something years and retired with that company. My mother actually started with one piece of antique furniture in a consignment store. And with the help of my father, um, they built it to the largest antique store in the state of Louisiana. Wow. And they, my mother is always, and my dad's always been an entrepreneur pretty much. I mean, my, my mother, 100%, my dad, you know, helping. But I did watch her grow her success. And I watched how she was able to live her life the way she wanted to live it. And uh, so that I, do, I do give her a lot of um, uh, kudos to her by teaching us. And what's funny is my brother's like that. My sister's like that. We're all like that. We have that entrepreneurial spirit. I didn't learn anything about goal setting, time management, reading. I always joke about it in my talks about how until I started, um, uh, until I got my first Brian Tracy tape um, and listened to it a thousand times and then got my Les Brown tapes and listened to those till the ink fell off of them, I never really knew what self-development was. I never knew what it really set, meant to sit down and, and focus on what you wanted to achieve and have faith and have the right attitude and, and read and learn. I always just kind of flew by the seat of my pants and I always laugh. I tell people, I don't even know how I got through college because I hated to read. I was never a reader growing up and my parents were really never the ones to kind of really push uh, education on us. We did what we had to do. We all of us went and got a degree, my brother and sister, but you know, it really was never kind of, uh, taught at an early age. It really came to me after I graduated college. Well, I think that that's what makes you a good uh, mentor and trainer. You have people who have, like if you had been born with a great attitude and you're just always having a great attitude and always cheery, you can't really help somebody do something that is an inborn trait for you. It's something that you had to learn. It's something that you had to go through, you know, all those bumps in the road to acquire. And, you know, it's just like, you know, in sobriety, you know, it's, it's hard to help someone get sober if you didn't yourself get sober, you know, and in real estate, you know, if you've sold a lot of property, you can help other people do it. So yeah. it's, it's those of us who have a story that, uh, that can help. So what are some of the books that you have read and some of the mentors you've had besides Brian Tracy and uh, Les Brown? Well, I wish I could show you. I've got uh, two uh, huge uh, bookshelves right behind these, two, this, my computer here. Um, a lot of the books that I have, I mean, I've got Chicken Soup of the Soul. I've got Think and Grow Rich. I've got the Rich Life, I've got, uh, let's see, the, the uh, One Minute Millionaire, I've got uh, Guard Your Heart, I'm just picking someone, Everyone Wins, where's some of my Zig Ziglar books, I mean, I've got 
from Brian Tracy to Les Brown to uh, Zig Ziglar to Ogmandino, mm. um, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, the cool thing about being in our business, and you know this, and meeting the people that we've met, um, I we do a lot of, and, and you'll you'll see this even more when you write your book. We trade books, and it's really cool because I really come across books that I probably would have never picked up or never really went out and looked for, and or people are always telling me, "Hey, you need to grab this book." And that's the cool thing is I, I when someone tells me, someone gave me advice. If someone tells you about a book, that's a, there's a reason that the universe is telling you to read that book. And I would always highly recommend to go out and get it. So, um, and one of the cool things I do now is I listen to a lot of books now too. So I drive a lot or I'm on the plane or I'm sitting at the airport waiting on a flight. I've got the, uh, the earbuds in and I'm listening to something because I'm always trying to get that next idea or kind of like, you know, and you know, in our business as well, you know, when somebody does come to you for help with coaching and training or, or speaking, that you have some really good tips and some good tools that you've learned from others. Well, that's one of the best things about doing this show is uh, we've interviewed probably uh, 200 people at this point, and they're all motivational and inspirational and have a great story. I mean, it's the happiness jungle. We're not going to have people on here that don't have a great story. And to your point about book swapping, as a matter of fact, the last time I was at a Habitude Warriors, um, I brought a hundred of my books, Mingle to Millions, and there were probably 10, 12, 15 of us that all, we did a big book signing. So there were so many books there that I, I did end up swapping books with four or five people, including uh, Frank Shankowitz of... Uh, 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 the Make a Wish, Make a yeah. Wish guy, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, Wish Man is the name yeah. of the book and the movie that came out. So yeah, yeah, lots of stuff to learn at the uh, at the Habitude Warriors. What are some other conferences that you've spoken at, or uh, other big names of people that you've been able to share a stage with? Um, I've been able to share st uh, share stages with quite a few people. Um, I've been invited to different conferences and leadership. Um, none of the really the big names that probably most people know, but, you know, some really good speakers and trainers that are out there. Um, I do a lot of stuff here in Louisiana, uh, Bruce Wilkinson, um, I've got Gene Gatz, uh, Marvin LeBlanc, a lot of the people that are here in the Louisiana region, I've been able to share the stage with and do a lot of good things with as well. Um, and a lot of times, uh, I'm trying to get on more of the bigger stages when it comes to that. Most of my stuff is all the associations and, uh, the opening keynotes, the closing keynotes and the breakout sessions that I do. So, um, yeah, it, it's amazing though, though, when you do other events with other speakers, uh, one thing that I always tell other speakers to do, go take the time to listen to other speakers. Don't just show up. Don't just, you know, kind of pop in and pop out when you speak, go take the time and learn. Oh. And I can't, I can't tell you, uh, I had a friend of mine tell me that a long time ago and, uh, it's amazing. Some of the ideas and things, I mean, I sat through, uh, several Habitude Warrior conferences and really learned a lot about different ways and uh, presentation skills, telling stories, things of that nature and ideas that I even came up with that uh, or ideas that were spoken about on the stage that reminded me of things that I've been through or some ideas that I had that I was able to share uh, on other stages as well. Well, the fact is for me, the more I know, the more I know I don't know, and the more I know I need to know. <laughs> and, you know, I, yeah. I, I had a mentor many years ago who said, you know, Cammy, people can only take in baby bird bites. You know, you're taking yeah. in baby bird bites from, from someone, and then you're regurgitating the baby bird bites to your people. And so I'm always wanting to grow and learn. And, you know, I, f I feel like it's my moral obligation to continue learning because there are people that are looking to me for knowledge. And so, you know, I'm, I'm always wanting to find the, the, the freshest, newest thing. But at the same time, really, it's all the same thing over and over and over. It's just different perspectives and different angles. And isn't it true that sometimes you can hear something 10 times, but there's that one time that you hear it in just the right way and just the right time that it, that it really hits you the way you need to hear it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I work for Brian Tracy, I've seen him at least 15, 20 times, the same exact presentation and I always picked up something new. And the other thing that I, I always tell people too, is that, um, 90% of our thoughts are the same thoughts from yesterday. And so when you pick up a book or you read, I mean, you know, watch a video, listen to a podcast, 
you're actually having new thoughts because your brain will go on autopilot if you don't read, listen, or, or, you know, watch something. So that's one of the things. And the other thing I share with people too, is people are always asking me, you know, besides, besides having an attitude of gratitude, what are some of the ways to stay positive? And I tell them all the time, pick up a book, pick up a go, go watch a video because you're going to see somebody like you or myself that, you know, they see you and I up on stage and they're like, Oh, these guys have it together. But then if they listen to a podcast we've done, or if they read our book or do, you know, or watch one of our videos and they're going to go, Oh my gosh, these people have really been through some things I can connect. And, uh, I always, I love watching things that, you know, uh, biographies and reading biographies of people that you think that just showed up and played football on Sunday or became a, you know, an elected official or, became a millionaire overnight. No, I love watching or listening or reading about the, the struggles they went through. And it really helps me because I'm like, if they went through their struggles, I've got to put my time in as well. You know, it's interesting you say that because for some reason we all do tend to, you know, we see somebody on the, on that field playing football or on that stage speaking or on the Oprah show. And for some reason we feel like, oh, that was overnight success. But yeah. I, I would venture to, to say that nobody's had overnight success. Everybody's had to go through a lot to get. There. I don't know why we just assume, wow, must be nice. Must yeah. be lucky for them. Yeah. I don't remember who the speaker is that says that must be nice. I remember him saying that over and over, must be nice. And just yeah. making fun it, that people say that, you know. And we do that all the time. I mean, we, we see someone that, you know, like you said, you know, playing football on Sunday or whatever it may be or singing. And then, you you know, like I used to like watching VH1 behind the music and, um, and learning about the bands that I loved and seeing that they had to live in a van <laughs> or live in an apartment with 10 of them in an apartment. You know, you think they just got up on stage and they were an instant success. Um, I love watching those things because I know that, to, you know, and, and one thing I learned a long time ago, too, is the most successful people can tell you more about their, their failures than their successes. And, well, uh, and, and one reason for that is the, the more successful a person, the reason they're successful is because they've had a lot more failures. You know, I, I, love, and, I love John Maxwell's book, Fail Forward. Because yep. th they say if you want success, the fastest way to success is to fail forward fast. It's the people that are afraid of looking bad and afraid of failure that stay in their comfort zone that don't achieve those great things for them to even be talking about. When I, when I coach people on making phone calls, which God forbid somebody actually pick up the phone and call somebody anymore. But, you know, when we talk about prospecting, I, I, I tell people, listen, if you're not being told to F off, shame on you. That means you're not yeah. trying. You're, yeah. you're, you're not yeah. pushing yourself. You're not making enough calls. You're not going to enough events. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing I tell people all too, is, um, that's actually how you create your attitude when you're going from the negative circumstances back. And I mean, when you're getting knocked down, knocked down, knocked down, knocked down, is, are you the one that that's having the positive attitude saying, all right, I'm going to get back up. All right, I'm going to get back up. All right, I'm going to get back up. And those are the ones that are really training their attitude because attitude's a habit. Most people don't realize that. They think it's something we're born with or something. I mean, like I said, you know, my, my family jokes that I had the bad attitude. And I always tell them, well, you know, now I know what those sides are. You know, I had the bad attitude. Now I have the great attitude. But even though, you know, and you'll, you'll contest to this, even though you and I go out and teach this and coach this and, and try to help others, we've got our days. I mean, I've got my days sometimes where I'm like, oh, I don't feel like making the calls. I don't feel like talking to no one. You know, um, I wish I could just be on stage all the time. That's when I'm, 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 I'm the happiest. But there's a lot of work to get on those stages. There's a lot of phone calls. There's a lot of marketing. There's a lot of time that you've got to put behind. The, you know, what is it they say? Not, you know, success is 90 percent preparation. The other is 10 percent execution. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's not the flip flip side. Uh, you know, most people would, most of those guys, I'm a, I'm a big sports fanatic. Most of those guys would love to just show up on Sunday and play football. They don't want to go to practice Monday through Friday in a hundred degree heat and, and, you know, and that kind of thing. So, uh, you've got to put your time in well, you and know once what, you accept that, you know what they say when, when people ask you, what do you do? Really? The answer for you, myself, any coach, any mentor, any real estate person, any network, like any business, the real answer is, what do I do? I market. 
Yeah. Because yeah, you're, that's basically yeah. Because yeah. If, if you're if you're not marketing, you can have the cure to cancer, but if people don't know you exist, you're not curing anybody. I want to give you the opportunity to say on camera the names of some people that you would like to be on their stage. I had a guy on um, a few months ago, and he was brilliant with this. He mentioned um, Gary V and Grant Cardone and people like that, and then he was able to pull out little bits and pieces of the show. To, to make these posts on social media. You got 50,000 hits from saying the names of some people. So who would you like to give a shout out to that you'd like to be on their stage? Well, my biggest one would be Les Brown. Les Brown was uh, been my, gosh, hands down favorite motivational speaker for years. Uh, like I said, I've got a, a audio set tape that actually melted because it was in my car the whole time. <laughs> um, and the, the ink fell off the sides of the tape. Uh, Les Brown's one that I, I, I've come very close a couple of times. I thought I had the chance to, to get on stage with him. Um, you know, you know, you got Brian Tracy, you got Grant Cardone, you've got Gary Vaynerchuk, you've got, um, uh, gosh, uh, Ryan Estes. There's, there's quite a few of them out there that I really look up to still. And, uh, you know, I'm like a little kid. It's kind of like somebody seeing the favorite baseball player. Um, you know, those are the type of, of people that, uh, I follow, I, you know, li listen to, you've got even, um, um, you know, people from the, uh, the, the, uh, show, um, the secret, uh, you know, there's so many people that I think it's John, uh, I always get his last name. John Asaroff. Asaroff. That's it. Yeah. I'd love to meet him and sit down with him and, um, say that, and, uh, say that, say, I'd love to meet John Asaroff. I'd love to meet John Asaroff. Um, they even have, uh, Ed Milet. I don't know if you've seen his shows before. Uh, and then, uh, th there's quite a few people on there that I follow that I really enjoy and, uh, would love to connect with. And even if I don't take a stage with them, I actually had a friend today and I'd love to be on, um, Greg Cardone's podcast. I'd love to get on a lot of these, uh, people's podcasts and learn and pick their brains and, and do the same exact thing. Well, the good news for you is now you can pull those little sound bites out of the show and you can put it on social media and have a chance of having them reach out to you. So we are at the end of the show. And the good news for you is the chief happiness officer of the Happiness Jungle is friends, personal friends with Les Brown. So I'll make sure that she knows that you would like to meet him and be on this stage. Ryan, it's been my pleasure to have you on. Thank you for being you. Thank you for getting off your attitude and for sharing the message that you share. You are definitely a message carrier, and I honor you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate that, came in. Thank you for allowing me to share my message with all of your audience. It's really been an honor and a pleasure. Back at you, friend. Bye-bye.